sound speeds. And if you have any kind of a need for vlogging, you might consider getting yourself some sort of a microphone that goes on your camera. The one that we're currently using is the Shure Motive MV88 stereo condenser microphone. It is a microphone that basically is a condenser cardioid microphone that plugs on the back of your iPhone and is powered through a lightning port, but does not work on your Android device. Now, of course, another option you have is a short shotgun microphone, such as this one right here, the Rode VideoMic Pro with lyre suspensions. Now, this right here is a great microphone for greater distance because it is a short shotgun microphone. So if I'm out here in the real world and I'm doing some sort of a vlog talking to you, then you can hear me just fine through this microphone. But if I want to do any kind of a voiceover, what are my options? Do I get close to this microphone or do I get some sort of a microphone that is a condenser microphone and put that against this microphone in a post process? So the idea for this video came from one of your fellow viewers who posed the question, is it better for me to use the microphone on my camera that I use for vlogging when I do voiceovers for those same videos or am I better off getting something like a large diaphragm condenser microphone? Maybe even a cheaper option like that newer NW700. So we're gonna do a voiceover inside of our car. Obviously the air is on, we can't have that. So now we're gonna do a voice, the engine's on, we can't have that. Now let's listen. Jeez, I hear my jacket more than I hear anything else. And that's because it's fairly quiet in here. Now what else can I do inside of this environment, which is basically acoustically designed by a car company to be fairly quiet? What else can I do? I know I can lower the volume of my voice because the louder I am, the more my voice is gonna be reflecting off of the other surfaces inside of this car. So if I'm gonna do a voiceover inside of my car with this particular microphone like the Shure MV88, then I don't wanna to get too far away off of it. Obviously, you're gonna to need to gain down your level a little bit so that way it's not gonna be as hot to your system. Now, another thing to keep in mind on this microphone is that overhead miking is gonna most likely be best for your voiceover. Maybe not straight up overhead, but something in front of you along the lines of this could work pretty well for you. Let's do a voiceover and we'll see how it sounds. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can send an email to soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice. Of course, the angle is not going to be great for your voiceover, but you don't care about that once you get to the studio, now, do you? Of course not. Nobody's going to be watching the video you recorded along with your voiceover, so what do you have to worry about? Unless, of course, you happen to have a YouTube channel and you choose to put it out there for the whole world to see. Okay, let me ask you this. Which one sounded better to you? I'll tell you this. I'm not going to tell you which one sounded better to me because I can hear a few different things here that could be desirable to you depending on your circumstance. The MV88 comes with an app that allows you to dial in on how much sideways rejection you have. So if you're in a noisier environment and you want to get a little more narrow, you can. Now, it's also a stereo microphone, which could play to your benefit. Let me just put it to you this way. You know the FBI and CIA and any time a government agency wants to put a hidden microphone someplace, usually that's a stereo microphone. The reason? Well, what's better than one microphone? Two microphones. If you have a noise on one microphone, if it is picked up on the same one on the other microphone, then you may actually be able to reverse the phase and cancel it out a little bit. You could be able to determine if it was a noise built into the microphone or if it was a noise built into the environment that the microphone was placed in. You can also dial in on exactly how much left or right something was with that stereo microphone if you know which way it was pointed. So that's a little tidbit of knowledge here. But the MV88 does the exact same thing with you. If your voice is here and then you suddenly move over there, it's going to be able to track with you and you can go into software and pan with it if you really want to. Now, if you choose to, you can also go with something more like the VideoMic Pro, which is a shotgun microphone. And it, of course, rejects out more to the side and is better for reaching a longer distance without background noise. So both of these microphones have their appeals to you. Which one do you like better? It completely depends on you and basically how you listen. It could be as easy as asking yourself, which microphone do you like better in post? Which one perhaps tweaks better than the other? It's really your choice. Now, if you have the opportunity to use both microphones and you A-B them, then you can determine which one you like better. And here's why I'm not going to tell you which one I like better. Listening is, as you've heard me say many times, a very unique experience to everybody. What sounds good to you may not sound good to me and vice versa. The reasons, 
It could be that in your younger years, you blew out your high-pitched hearing listening to a bunch of concerts. Of course, we also lose high-pitched sounds as we age. So, depending on where you are in your age, it could sound totally different, which is why your ears can change the way things sound over the course of time as you age. What sounds good to you when you're younger may not sound as good when you get older, because when you get older, you may want to have more highs because you're losing them. If you wear hearing aids, that's going to totally affect the way you hear sound. If you've ever had any kind of ear surgery and you have hearing loss accordingly, then you may hear sound differently than everyone else. If you only have hearing in one ear, or let's say you have your eardrum, but you don't have the hammer, anvil, or stirrup in the ear in order to produce the sound onto it, then you may have to listen to something like the Aftershocks headphones that I reviewed. And if you want to watch the review, there it is right there. Those are bone conductive and they're not high fidelity, so chances are you're going to be missing out on some things that you would catch if you were wearing headphones or with monitor speakers. Here's a couple more things to think about. If your entire vlog is being shot exterior and you record your voiceovers interior, that's going to maybe have a problem cutting with the exteriors. You might consider recording your voiceover outside in the same environment you were just shooting in. Or if you are shooting your entire vlog inside, you don't necessarily want to step outside and do your voiceover. There's no reason to record your voiceovers in a loud environment if a quiet environment is available. It's a lot easier for you in post and it just sounds so much better. If you spend a couple of hundred dollars for a good quality external camera microphone for your vlogging, are you really going to want to intercut that in with a cheap large diaphragm condenser microphone just because it's a large diaphragm condenser? That's your decision. And that's a choice I'm going to stay completely out of. But I will invite you to stay tuned into more episodes of Sound Speeds in the future because I'm going to bring you more things to think about and offer you sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.